Christo friends, welcome back to Opus LNI where we are back on our smocking bull. Okay, so you know I love a good smocked apron, and I know you do too if my shop sales are any indication. I use mine all the time and it has the stains to prove it. But sometimes I want a little more coverage for my clothing than an apron that ties around my waist. And as it happens, I've collected a whole folder of late medieval German images showing the births of saints or important secular figures. In them, the midwives are depicted wearing an apron with a full skirt gathered at the chest and upper back and connected over the shoulders with thin straps. I've seen some recreations of these aprons that are only gathered at the very top edge held in place by the binding that also forms the straps. This seems to be in keeping with the German paintings that I've gathered, but those recreations tend to be more loose around the torso than I want in an apron. So what keeps gathered pleats nice and tidy? Smocking. Unlike honeycomb smocking, this kind has worked over already gathered pleats and is designed to keep the pleats tightly in place. We see this technique in 18th and 19th century English farmer shirts called smocks, of course, which is where we get the term. And it's still popular today as a decoration, mostly for children's dresses. For design inspiration, I looked to earlier aprons as depicted in the Luttrell Psalter and the Hookham Bible, both of which show aprons with decorative diamonds and diagonal lines. So everyone go grab your cuppa. Today, I am just drinking Harney and Sons Vanilla, my go-to daily drink. I've been running around, so no fancy teacup, just a travel mug this morning. Let's get into it. I'm starting by measuring how long I want the apron to be. This doesn't have to be an exact measurement, but I'm aiming for roughly mid chest to mid calf. These aprons look incredibly voluminous, so I'm going to use the full 56 inch width of my linen bolt for front and back. This will also mean less seam finishing since I can sew the side seams along the selvage. I had debated whether to curve the sides or leave them straight between the smocking and the skirt side seams, but the painting seemed to show a curve, so that's what I decided to go with. In order to do this mocking, I'm using one of the templates I made on my silhouette to create a grid that I will then use to make sure my gathering stitches are evenly spaced. If you're interested in one of these templates, the SVG file is available for free on my coffee shop. Since this grid is a little wider than I want, I'm going to go back and add a dot in between each mark on every row. After I finish adding the grid to the front and back, I'm going to hem the sides with a narrow double fold secured by a whip stitch. I prefer to hem the sides before doing the gathering just to give me a little more control over how the finished smocking will look.
Time to run the gathering threads. Do I need to make them different colors? No. Am I going to use them all anyway to make a rainbow just because the idea of queer gathering threads makes me giggle? Absolutely. Each gathering thread will go from the top of the fabric to the bottom at the same points horizontally so that when they're pulled tight each pleat will be the same width and they will all sit flush beside the next. I'll knot the gathering threads to each other in pairs on each end to hold the gathers tight. Next up, I'm going to be adding lines of stabilizing stitches where the lines of gathering threads are on the back sides of the apron. This will take the form of a back stitch that catches two pleats at a time. The pleats will be secured from the front by the smocking stitches. Next time I do a smocking project, I will do this step after the smocking as I found it a bit difficult to knot the smocking thread at the end of stitching in between the pleats. With the reference picture from the Latrell Salter pulled up on my phone, I will sketch out the smocking pattern on the gathered section of the apron. To make sure that I can incorporate several horizontal repeats of the diamond design, I will make two bands of it at the top and bottom separated by two simple zigzags in between. For the smocking, I am using silk thread from Eowyn De Weaver in a matching cream color because I want it to be a subtle design element that isn't easily visible from farther away. The smocking stitches are worked as a back stitch, like the stabilizing stitches, but catching only one pleat at a time. Being aware of the stitch tension is really important to making sure that the gathers lay properly and aren't too tight or too loose. For the straight lines, I will keep the thread below the needle as I stitch to keep the angle of stitching consistent. When I am stitching the diagonal lines, however, I will change that up. I will keep the thread above my needle when the line of stitching slants downward and below my needle when it slants upward. This keeps each individual stitch relatively straight, forming a diagonal line comprised of overlapping horizontal dashes.
After the smocking is done, I'll sew the side seams together. I didn't do this before because I figured it would be easier to manipulate the front and back pieces separately. No seam finish is necessary because the side seams are the fabric selvages. Because I used friction markers, I can easily erase the guidelines with heat, and using my fabric steamer instead of an iron means the pleats won't be crushed. Thank you to all of my current and continuing Kofi members, especially my newest member, Ribbon. Your support and the support of all of my members and croissants makes it much easier to do what I do and to provide quality content for everyone. Thank you all so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break to see the finishing touches. To finish up the apron, I am going to need a strip of fabric to create the binding that will finish the top of the smocking and form the straps. Initially, I thought I'd make it all from one long strip of fabric with a seam over one shoulder, but then I realized I wanted a little more flexibility in fitting and potentially future altering if necessary. So I cut the strip in half to have seams over both shoulders. When I want sharper creases than finger pressing will give me on linen, but I don't feel like getting out the iron, I will sometimes use a piece of tumbled rock to act as a, to act as a presser to get a nice sharp crease. We have evidence of glass burnishers being used to press fabric just as we would use an iron, but a tumbled rock works just as well for smaller applications. To secure the binding to the front of the apron, I am whip stitching the binding to every single pleat to make sure it's securely attached. On the back, I'm not going to be quite so meticulous, I'll whip stitch the binding to the line of gathering stitches every three or four pleats.
After marking the shoulder seams on my body, I will take the average length of all of those measurements since they're not exactly the same. Then I can whip stitch the rest of the straps closed and sew the shoulder seams together. For the last step, I'll even up the bottom edge and hem the apron with a whipped double folded hem and I'm finished.
Thank you for coming along with me today. I've been wanting to do some more intricate smocking to practice for a super secret smocking project later this year. I'm very pleased with how the apron came out and I really wish I'd finished it last night so I didn't splash soup on my skirt while I was cooking dinner. I'm looking forward to using it at an event. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and please consider sharing this or any of my videos to social media. If you're looking for me, I am at Opus LNI everywhere, and those links, as well as the link to my coffee, will all be in the description box below. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Whew.